Hey everyone, it's Byron again here to testify for Jesus Christ. Got several things to cover today. I'm going to play a film, film clip in the middle of this one. Um, in the previous two sessions, we talked about, um, in the initial one we talked about I being single. That's not all we talked about, but that was kind of the main thrust. I being single and fixed on Christ. Uh, in the second one, I'm just going to pick up the word uh, we used paradigms and those are things that we looked at I uh, compared them to having an idol in your heart or something that you believe in in yourself uh, that could possibly be something that you hold on to because you believe that there's no way it couldn't be true but then over time it could uh, be proven wrong or change and when we read the Bible when we look at things in the Bible we need to be aware that there's beliefs within us that may not have come from the Bible. There's actually people that say certain quotes and they say that's in the Bible and, it, and it's just not there. So uh, our mind needs to be renewed. We need to look at things from the, the scriptural perspective. Uh, in doing so, we talked about uh, reading the word of God, uh, washing of water by the word, but we called, said there was two parts to that. One, the word of God. And two, the Word is Jesus Christ. The Word became flesh, John uh, 1, 14. So there's some moving pieces here, and we can't, uh, we can't rule out the spiritual, and that is the working of the Holy Spirit in our life and praying that the Lord would show us, hey, this is it. <clears throat> Having said that, as a brief introduction, I just want to tell you what the Lord impressed upon me Last week, uh, what he impressed upon me again tonight, I mean last night, I was up to like 3.30, man. And, and this this thing just kept pounding me and pounding me. Um, and then I fell asleep and I dreamed about it. So, um, you know, I'm going to cover a dream as well. Uh, and that's adultery. Now, realize we're just getting into this. We're <clears throat> just getting started. Maybe you're just uh, j joining in. You need to kind of look at these things, uh, maybe go back where things were covered. March 29th, 2016, I talked about the way we think. Uh, initially, when I said the word a third, uh, adultery, you might have thought about a physical adultery, and that would be perfectly understandable. But biblically speaking, we can commit adultery against the Lord. So when we say adultery uh, in our minds today, we may immediately just think, bam, that's the worst one. That's the one that so-and-so goes and cheats on his wife or whatever. But after the renewing of our mind, after we start realizing, wait a minute, this thing is bigger than I thought, um, we might could get to the point, and I'm going to just state this because I believe this is the case, um, the greatest adulterers, in the world, those that commit more adultery than anyone are Christians. And the reason I'm going to say that is that Christians are constantly looking for something other than Jesus Christ for help. Uh, churches are, you know, churches have uh, counselors set up. They've got churches that recommend people to counselors who put them on medication. Um, and, and we're just continually being drawn away from Jesus Christ. Our eye is not single. Uh, and that's not even talking about the examples in the world that we could use. So when I say adultery, what I'm, what I'm speaking of is an adultery where you temporarily slip around behind Christ's back and go and seek um, consolation or go and seek advice, go and seek money or whatever um, outside of Christ. And I know it could sound like a stretch, and maybe I am stretching it a bit, but I believe, and this is deep down in my heart, in my life, what is different today and since 2000 and late 2007, early 2008, uh, is my awareness of my adultery. And from 2007 until now, late 2007 until now, um, I have been a, 
keenly aware if I'm looking to something other than Christ, I'm taking my eyes off Christ. I, my eye is not being single. Um, and I literally translate that in my head uh, as adultery. Now, I don't even want to, you know, uh, force that on someone. But I do want to allow it to start uh, maybe uh, kindling or whatever. I want, I want people to think about that. You can go into the Bible. You can type in a search word, uh, adultery. As you read down through there, you're going to see where um, different things happen, and it was turning away from God. Um, you're going to see the word whoredoms. Uh, Israel went and committed her whoredoms. Uh, that means left God, went off and did her thing. A lot of times that's speaking of false religions and idols and things like that but we can have idols in our hearts so that's the perspective I'm coming from so <clears throat> I'm going to play a clip I recorded this quite a while ago I think it was over a year ago uh, put it into the Roma series and it's about Romans chapter 7 verse 1 through 6 or so uh, and it speaks of adultery uh, and I'm, I'm just going to let it play and I'll be back uh, I'm going to after this plays I'll be back. I'm going to cover my dream from last night, which reinforced adultery, uh, included the song Bye Bye Miss American Pie, which I think is uh, uh, kind of like saying, say goodbye to America, Myron. They played the harlot. They, uh, they have turned to everything but me. And uh, anyway, I'm going to play this clip and uh, I'll be back. Hey, everyone. Today we're going to look at Romans 7, uh, starting in verse 1 going to go until some point and then talk about a little about what the apostle paul is actually saying uh, in romans 7 beginning in verse 1 we read know ye not brethren for i speak to them who know the law how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth for the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he liveth but if the husband be dead she is loosed from the law of her husband so then if while her husband liveth, she married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that she should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the notions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead when, when we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, and not in the oldness of the letter. So I'm going to stop right there and just begin to explain a little about what Paul is talking about. First of all, Paul uses an actual illustration from the law of God. And he's saying that as long as a person is married, if they were to go over to another person to have relations or to have a relationship, then they'll be called an adulteress. And the only way to break that, or the only way to be freed from the law of God under those circumstances, if, that, if one of the two members died, then the other living member could go and be married to another. Well, in the illustration, Paul shifts it to where the woman is the living member and the and, and he's using the woman pretty much like the bride of Christ so he's saying if we the bride of Christ at one point in time were married to the law if we now go and become married to Christ somebody has to die and the law can't die the law is good and holy the law will last forever so that the person that dies is the we, the bride of Christ. We die. We have become dead to the law. Therefore, we can be married to Christ and it not be adultery. Now, here, here's where people fall into the trap. that They don't fully quite understand this. If now we are married to Christ, then we can serve Christ, as it states in verse 6, in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter of the law. Many times people will be married to Christ, but they'll be taught 
well, you still got to do this, and you still got to do that, and you still got to do this. And it's a very subtle hint that we should take our eyes off Christ or interrupt the marriage to Christ in the Spirit and go back to the law and go back there where we knew there was no power because we needed Christ as our Savior. We couldn't keep the law. But we go back and start flirting. I call this, and I believe this is correct, spiritual adultery. So we have people in today's world who would be so ready to point out sin in other people's lives and, well, there's an adulteress and there's a murderer and there's a thief and there's a gossiper and there's this and there's that. But they themselves are in the, the act of adultery even while trying to say they're married to Christ because they're going and serving the, the letter of the law, trying to find a relationship with the law, which they had to openly admit was powerless when they came to Christ. So it's something to watch for. It's very subtle. Ministers in the pulpit are teaching outside of faith in Christ and keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ as you would in a marriage. But they're teaching to go and do this and do this, this, this. And literally that's adultery. A adultery, you know, just but you can also find idolatry in that same mix. People can have things as idols in their life as opposed to Christ. A, a, say a good luck charm, something along that line. Something that is occupying their mind or occupying a portion of their faith other than Christ. Just a little there about Romans 7, the first part of it there. Speaking of spiritual adultery. As Christians, we are dead and raised in newness of life. And we can serve Christ in newness of spirit and not the old letter of the law by faith in Christ. Hey guys, I'm back. I, um, I want to tell you my personal experience. And I, I've explained in the, in the previous two sessions about singleness of eye and also <clears throat> paradigms or things that you believe to be true. And uh, they're holding you back or they're preventing you, as one example we use for uh, running a sub four minute mile. <clears throat> Uh, when I began to listen to these guys explain this, and not only just this, but more of what Paul was saying in Romans chapter 7, uh, I was skeptical, man, because I had been in church. I knew. I already knew what I knew. And it took me about two weeks. And after about a two-week period, the light switch came on. Now, that was for me, and when that light switch hit, bam, things just took off. There's another guy that I know. He had listened to me talk about this uh, for quite a while. I mean, a long time. Uh, just recently, within the last three or four months, the light switch went on. And when it did, things began to really happen in his life. Uh, he called me up said they had this vision of Jesus and he, his blood was uh, covering me. And I was turning white and... and <clears throat> A couple more dreams and things like that began to happen with him. And I want to submit to you, it happened as a result of faith, uh, faith in Christ, and turning away from everything else that's out there, uh, even that sounds good and holy, such as the law. Uh, you know, I'm not, you know, I would, I would say that there are people today that may be listening to me and, and it's difficult for you to understand how could you not try to keep the law <clears throat> but what I'm submitting to you is um, I do keep the law but I don't keep it with the thought I've got to do this I keep it in the spirit in the spirit of Christ and, I, and that's a it's like a, a paradigm it's, it's something that I believe a person has to shift from uh, the oldness of the letter into the newness of life. Now, to reinforce what I'm talking about here as far as adultery goes, uh, I'm actually thought I was going to share one from last night. I'm going to share two, but I'm going to make them brief. Um, just last week, the Lord gave me a dream where I saw adultery. Uh, if you remember that picture of Hosea and the lady was turning back and looking at something else, uh, that's a little depiction of adultery. Um, 
Peter walking on the water, saw the wind, took his eyes off Christ, and sank. I mean, if we want to walk on the water, we have to have our eyes on Christ, and there can be nothing to stop it. I mean, you can't have a guy come along with this great idea and say, hey, man, let's do this. You know, it's got to be on Christ. The, the last week thing I was mentioning, um, a guy was in a hot tub with a girl and looking at another girl. You know, that's a depiction of adultery where uh, if you're married, you're here with your spouse and looking off somewhere else, even if that's not a physical act, which it was not in the case that I saw. It's a mental or uh, mental act in the physical that goes on in that part of our mind I talked about. Um, but then again, it's a spiritual act when it comes to the Lord. And then just last night, a dream from just last night, um, I was at a social gathering, uh, and it was my place where this social gathering was uh, uh, taking place. But I was getting no respect as if, you know, as to say, well, this is my place. People, like, for example, uh, everybody else had chairs, and I was sitting on crates. Um, and then the Lord showed me this lady sitting in the middle of all these people. And the attention, even my attention, was on this lady. Uh, and I'm not saying it had my undivided attention. There was other things going on and all that, but... Um, it was on this lady, and as I was seeing these things happen, I was seeing, I was, I was hearing the song "Bye Bye Miss American Pie," and I looked at the lyrics just a few minutes ago. There's some things in those lyrics that make me think of Babylon, and the one thing is, is that you know, in the Bible, the, the Lord says that uh, the harp will not be heard anymore, the sound of the harper, or something to that effect. Well, in that song, Bye Bye Miss American Pie, it talks about the band or the music stops. And you know, I was just sitting there thinking, my goodness, Lord, look what you just showed me. You showed me um, that this, this nation is going down. And, Lord, you've also shown me the church. I've talked about the church in Thyatira. The church in Thyatira is going down because of adultery. And it's not the physical adultery that everybody is so happy to think that it's not them. It's the spiritual adultery, the things that are coming between you and the Lord. Uh, it, it can come in the form of another person. It can come in the form of a song. It can come in the form of a preacher. It can come in the form of your idol in your heart. All these things can be grouped as things that take our eyes off Jesus Christ. And, you know, Pastor Carter Conlon um, he did a, and his his preaching is on my website. If you go in there and kind of highlight the top bars, you can see a thing called preaching, and and that's him. He pastors in uh, Times Square Church. I used to have David Wilkerson on there, and the, the playlist somehow uh, got taken off. <clears throat> but he talked about a time in a, in a sermon. He said, "There's things that you can learn, and that means I can read the Bible. I can read it, and I can." know that the Bible says this. I've learned that. Uh, but then he said, but when you get to know it, you've not only learned it, but you've lived it. And and I, I've been a trainer before in jobs and things like that, and I can tell you that you know most jobs start off with a classroom set, situation. And everything is fine and rosy in the classroom situation. And then you go and you start performing the job, and in the performance of the job, you think back and go, man, I should have listened in class because this, this sucker is a lot tougher out here than it was in that classroom. But in time, that person, three, four, six months or whatever, that person will become proficient in the job that they learned about in the classroom. At that point in time, that person could say, I know. Well, what I mean by I know these things to be true is that I have lived this. I have not just read it in the Bible and thought, well, what a great and wonderful thought. I, if in case you're maybe not necessarily embracing this right now, I was just like you. At one time in my life, I stood before some men with absolute and total skepticism. And after letting this saturate with me about 
two weeks. One day I realized, I mean, and this is how it, this is how I realized it, because I was in a bad shape anyway, man. But this is how I realized. I realized that if I did what those guys were talking about, I would not be living anymore, but Christ living through me. And I'm going to tell you something. At that time in my life, that was a good deal. And I'm going to tell you something. At this time in my life, that's a good deal. For the life that I live, I no longer live in the flesh. I'm going to put it on the screen. Uh, but I live by faith. There's, there's a verse there, and I'm going to grab it. I'm going to put it on the screen. Um, Christ lives through me, man. I mean, that's where we need to get to. And I'm going to tell you something, man. It, you know, if you're married, you put yourself in this situation. You're, let's say you go out on a dinner date with your husband. You're sitting there and uh, sitting at the table, and you're wanting to be intimate, not in a physical way, but in an emotional type way. And as you're looking across that table, your husband is like, and you just happen to notice that, you know, for the most part, most of the time when he's turning his head or looking away, uh, it has to do with a female. And you're sitting there on the other side like, oh my gosh, it's true. He really doesn't have a single eye. He's got his eyes on everything that walks through that door. That's the, that's the illustration. That's what I'm trying to, uh, to portray here is that we can frustrate the Holy Spirit, uh, taking our eyes off Jesus, putting our faith in something else. And because of the way this world has worked, because of the ways of preachers have preached, in our mind, we don't necessarily catch it because we haven't renewed our mind. But at the point of the renewal of the mind, at some point when that light went off for me, at some point when that light went off for that other gentleman, bam, there it is. Oh, now I get it. And now I know because I'm going to apply it into my life. So, All right, that's it. Uh, two dreams, a little about adultery and wrapping that into, uh, you know, the lighthouse and trying to seek the light and see where the light is. And I'm telling you, man, the light is in the spirit. The light is in Jesus Christ. And there's a whole lot of things out there that we need to block off. Even good ideas, even the law, which, I mean, the law's not going anywhere. We can use it as a mirror. You know, we can look at that mirror and see how well we're doing. But that law is merely telling us how we're doing. It's not empowering us to do. And the empowerment comes from the Spirit and it comes from singleness of faith in Christ. So, Alright, I'll uh, catch you later.